Well, there I am. I'm live and in person. We're going to move right along, and uh, this might be a short program because we got to get to church and get going. And, of course, we're all following the news of the new war in Israel. I've been preaching that this war was going to happen for about nearly six years now, and it's finally happening. I am not glad about it. But uh, there are things that are going to have to happen, and there are things that we're going to have to go through and watch and and be subsumed by. And uh, what I always ask my friends is, did you think the end of the world was going to be pretty? (laughs) So anyway, we're not going to talk about that this morning, but just pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Remember and remember and remember Psalm 121. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. God knows what's going on. He is not unaware. And all will be well when the king comes. Now, chapter 6. We will just recap from yesterday. Chapter 6 of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. Remember, he's preaching in the court of King Josiah. And uh, preaching to all the, the ruling class and whatnot, and he's uh, he been be- God has been begging through Jeremiah the people to return to him, and they so far have not returned and show no sign of returning. But even though he has pronounced judgment on the nation of Judah and will destroy it, he has held out his hands, and anybody that wants to return to me, I'll take care of you. Hey. It's a good deal. You need to take it today. All you have to do is believe that Jesus suffered and died for your sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. You believe that, you repent of your sin, turn from your sin, turn to him from your sin. He'll take care of your sin. You just turn to him and he will take care of your sin. That's what sanctification is all about. Trust him. And uh, you won't have to worry about a whole lot, either here, there, or in the air. It'll all be good. Chapter 6. Yesterday, God says through Jeremiah, O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a sign of fire in Beth Hakarim. For evil appeareth out of the north, and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents around against her round about. They shall feed every one in his place. Prepare ye war against her. Arise, and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away. For the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, let us go by night, and let us destroy her palaces. For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew you down trees and cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is wholly oppression in the midst of her, as a fountain casteth out her waters. So she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. And that was yesterday. He brings us up today. What he's saying is, is that her wickedness is, is just so bad and so overpowering. It's just, it's just spraying out like a spring, like a fountain. It's just overflowing. Her wickedness, her evil, her malignity just sprays out everywhere. That's like the United States is right now. Our malignity just sprays out because we've just become so wicked as a country. I just, you know, (laughs) I don't want to go into it again, but I never thought I'd see the day that I'm seeing now. It's just incredibly disheartening, but God is still on the throne. As brother Hutchings used to say on the Southwest radio church, you remember that Southwest radio church on Saturday afternoon, God is still on his throne and prayer changes things. God bless Brother Hutchings. Now, we will start in verse 8 of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. 
God speaking through Jeremiah to the king's court, the ruling class. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee. If you don't take instruction, he's going to quit giving instruction. He'll just back up and let you do whatever you want to do. That is the essence of free will. God offers a choice. It's put several ways in the scripture. You know, today I give you the choice between life and death. Choose life. Uh, uh, you know, you can go on and serve the gods that your father served on the other side of the flood. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. John the Baptist says that he that hath the Son hath life. He that, believe, he that believeth on the Son of God hath life. He that believeth not on the name of the Son of God shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth upon him. It is always a choice between light and dark, good and evil, life and death. Choose life. When you choose, you have to be instructed. That's why I do this every day. Hoping that a few, a handful, will return to the Lord their God here in these last days. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate. They had a perfect example. You know, less than a hundred years before the Assyrians had come and destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. See, Israel and Judah had a civil war during the days of Rehoboam, Solomon's son. The country split in two with Jeroboam taking ten tribes and going to the north, and, and, and Judah and Benjamin staying in the south and becoming Judah, and the northern kingdom became Israel. Over a period of time, most of the Levites drifted down out of Israel and came back to Jerusalem because that's where the temple was, and they were the, they were the tribe that did the service of the temple. But there have been two countries at this point for over 300 years, Israel, 80 years before this, 670, 80, depend on how you count, because these, these campaigns are kind of hard to figure. You know, well, did Israel stop when the capital was was uh, destroyed, or did Israel stop when all the rich people were taken into captivity and the royal seed and all that stuff? So it's, it's kind of hard to tell exactly when the Assyrian captivity happened, but we're pretty sure it, when it began, and that would have been about 80 years before this in the the, seven, nine, uh, the 690s B.C. Now, Israel was completely destroyed. Their capital was destroyed. A few people who escaped the sword drifted down into Judah, came across the, the Jordan River there at Jericho. You know, they came down into Judah, and they, they, uh, they told the people, hey, you know, Israel's destroyed. So they, had the, they knew what total destruction looked like. Josiah, the one who is king right now, while Jeremiah is preaching to the higher ups, uh, Jeremiah took an army into Israel, and he took an army. So, in case there were any, you know, Assyrian outposts that wanted to fight him, he'd have an army with him. But he went around to Bethel and to Dan, where they had set up their false temples to their false gods with the gold, golden calves that, Jer uh, that Jeroboam had them to to build. Uh, so that they would serve other gods, they uh, as they were, they saw the destruction of the country while they went up there to destroy what was left of these temples. Because Joshua uh, Josiah wanted to destroy all of the idols out of the land. The problem Josiah had in his revival is that he did destroy those idols that you could see, but he could not destroy the idols in the hearts of men and women who would not return to their God. Same thing now. I mean, <laughs> you got somebody that, that is a devil worshiper and they're bowing down to Baphomet. You know, that's the big goat head deal, you know, that <laughs> that is so prominent in all the satanic symbols. Well, you could take down the symbols and you can burn down their temples and you can destroy their statues. But the devil is still in their heart. Their idol is still in their heart. <laughs> Idolatry is a really funny thing. You know, Elvis has been dead now since 1977. He's been dead for a long time. 
But every time I hear an Elvis record, I still go, oh, yeah, that's I loved Elvis, man. Same thing with the John Wayne movie. You know, John Wayne's been dead since 79. Well, one of his movies coming on TV, I still watch because I love John Wayne. The idols remain. The idols we have to cast down are the ones in our heart. We can't get rid of all idols just by burning pagan temples. Can't do it. So anyway, they knew what the destroyed land looked like because Josiah had had taken a had taken a a trek, had taken a, a journey up in there, an expedition he had taken to see. And to, when he went to destroy those temples at Dan and Beersheba. It says, violence and spoil is heard and heard before me continually is grief and wounds. That was from yesterday. O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from me, lest I make thee desolate. And the land was, was desolate like Jerusalem, a land not inhabited. Well, the land was inhabited by some sheep and by some cattle and by some herdsmen and some occupying armies and a handful of uh, of people that were were like half Jewish and half Assyrian or half Hittite <laughs> or half Chaldean and uh, and uh, they had just uh, they had just raped and pillaged the country and there wasn't nothing left and so God is saying that he's going to leave Jerusalem the same way a land desolate. When I depart from thee, you'll be a land desolate and a land inhabited. But he's still there. God is still there with him, begging them to return to them, to him. And thus saith the Lord God of hosts, in verse 9, they shall truly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine and turn back by an hand as a grasshopper into the baskets. They're going to pick you clean. When they come, there's not going to be anything left. You're not even going to find a grape. They're going to go through the vineyards. There's going to be nothing left to eat, nothing left to make a wine of, out of. You might want to be drunk when all this is over. When you see all this, there won't be anything to make wine out of. That's, that'd be bad, wouldn't it? Uh. They shall truly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine, turn back by an hand as a grasshopper into the baskets. Your empty basket, grasshopper jumping in there. Verse 10, to whom shall I speak, God asks, and give warning that they may hear. He says, I'm talking Jeremiah to death. He's just talking, 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 telling you everything that I'm saying, but... I can't get through to you, God says. I'm trying to get through to you, but I can't. He's trying to get through to us today, but we won't listen. But individuals do listen, just like I did. I responded to him. You can too. He's talking to you right now. He's talking to you through me. Actually, he's talking to you through Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is talking to you through me because I'm reading the words that Jeremiah preached. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. They've stopped up their ears. They've closed it over. They can't hear. La, 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 la. They can't hear because they don't want to hear. Oh, gee, I can't hear you. Or the classic thing is, hey, mister, you got a banana in your ear. I can't hear you. I've got a banana in my ear. Yeah, you know, it was just like that. Their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord unto them is as a reproach, and it should be. They had plenty to be reproached for. And it says they have no delight in it. Well, they probably didn't when they heard it because God is telling them how rotten they are. But see, the word of God, although it can burn like a brand and though it can slap you in the face, what it does is it gives you the path to glory. Because if we listen to the word of the Lord, no matter how bad it is, no matter 
how bad it makes me feel because the only reason it makes me feel bad is because I have sinned in the thing that he is reproaching me for. So, of course, I hear it as a reproach. Jimmy, I'd like you to take you to heaven, but you're a sinner. You're just too wicked to get into heaven. Who, me? A fine fellow such as I? Well, I deserve to go right into heaven because I'm so fine. That's the human condition. We're not fine. We don't measure up. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. We don't delight in the word because we don't want to be corrected. And to be specific, we don't delight in the Lord because the word of the Lord tells us to abandon our sin and turn to him. On some level, many of us might want to return to him, but we want to keep sinning more. Why? Because sin is fun. Sin is what I want, what my flesh wants. Not what God wants. You know, if you're ever mad at what the word of God says, it's because you're sinning. You quit sinning. Let it go and turn to Christ. Come back to him. Then the word of God won't make you feel bad anymore. It makes you feel good. Because it is a delight under my ears. Yeah, that's the reason that we t don't go to church. That's the reason we don't listen to preachers. That's why we don't read the Bible is because as a country, as a nation, as a society, is because it makes us feel bad. Why does it make us feel bad? Because we're filled with sin and evil and debauchery and rebellion against the living God as revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and well and ready to save any who asks. So ask him today, return to the Lord today, open your ears up and hear the word of the Lord. God bless you.